All right, welcome to the tutorial for lab five, possibly six. Anyway, we're going to validate Castigliano's. So for this lab, you'll do hand calculations to validate everything you do in ANSYS. And we're going to be using beam elements. And um, we're going to use beam 189 this time. It's just a little more accurate than beam 188. For the sake of time, I've already specified my element type and my material properties. But anyway, for this lab, you're going to be using uh, beam elements, as I said. And if you remember, you have to specify a cross section for beam elements. So you'll specify three different cross sections that match the cross section specified in the lab report. And then you'll, just like a cantilever beam, you'll constrain it on one end and put a load on the other. Um, so there's not much new you have to learn in this lab. So I'm just going to go over um, a little specifics on how to do um, multiple cross sections um, in a built up beam structure. It's just a little bit different than usual. Um, but if you can imagine, um, you're just drawing some key points, you're making lines, you're turning those lines into a certain cross section. So I'm going to go into the uh, sections, beam, and common sections here. Remember, I've already done my material properties and my element type. So under the common sections, we're going to want to specify three different cross sections. So I'm going to name this one um, square, just for fun, and then I'll give it half inch base and a half inch height. And NB is the number of divisions along the base, and NH is the number of divisions along the height. Um, so 20 is probably too accurate, actually. We'll just do 10 on each. And I'm not going to model the exact shape that you get in the lab. I'm just going to do a really simple um, L-beam just to demonstrate the principles that you'll need to finish the lab. So I'm only going to make two different uh, sections here. So now when I... So I hit OK on the last one, sorry. I hit OK on the last one, and I'll open up the common sections uh, window again. And I'll just change that 1 to a 2, and it'll bring up a new cross section for me to define. So I'll call this one round. And I'll pick the round cross section instead of the happy face. And I'll give it a radius. Uh, let's just say it's 0.75. Actually, we'll make it 0.5. And N is the number of divisions on the outside of the uh, your cir circular cross section, so I guess the amount of slices you want to divide it into. So I'm going to put 50, um, 50 divisions around the outside, and then T is the number of rings that get put inside the uh, the cross section, kind of like rings on a tree. So I'm just going to say 15 or 10 just for simplicity. Now we hit OK, and you'll hit up common sections again. You'll type in a three and make it a third cross section. Um, which will be a rectangular, but it's still the same square. You just define you know, different lengths for B and H. And you'll have to play around with B and H. Um, I believe it's different than what you would expect. So if you draw your um, your beam along the X, Y axis, belie I believe the B, the base, is actually what you would call height along the Z axis. Um, but So play around with that. You might have to switch them back and forth to get the right, um, the right shape. But we're going to uh, close our sections, go into modeling, and create some key points. Um, so we always want to start with the origin just to make things easy. Hit apply. We have a key point in the origin. Now we're going to make some more. Um, I don't know what your lengths are, but just for this, uh, this demo, I'm just going to have an L beam that's uh, 20 by 20, I guess. Okay, now the problem with this simple um, having only two lines right here, you can imagine if you took um, two square rods and had them only touch in the center, that they wouldn't be fully mated like um, the like the uh, built up beam structure drawn in the lab printout, in the lab handout. Um, if you had these lines extend only to number two and then turn that into a cross section, your square, for example, would go down to the two, right over at the line, at the key point, and then back up like that. And then this one would go over and down and back up. So they wouldn't be, if you can imagine it, they wouldn't be fully connected. Um, so we're actually going to extend this line um, longer than it needs to be so that our, well, longer than these key points here so that when we turn those lines into a model or into a cross section that they're actually fully connected. So we're going to create lines, straight lines, and turn these into lines. 
and <clears throat> we're going to create, you don't have to do that first, you can just make all your key points first. Um, so I'm going to make, at this corner I want to extend both these lines in that and that direction. So I'm going to just add an extra inch. And then, did not get added. Where's my key points? Ah, oh, it's over there. That works. And then I'm gonna, oh, that was wrong, sorry. 21 and X, zero and Y. There we go, that's what I wanted. And this one's gonna be 20 and X, and actually negative one and Y. That's what I want right there. So now when I draw my lines, I'm going to actually have extra little lines here that extend past. And the problem with that is that ANSYS doesn't think those lines are actually going to connect together. So if you didn't um, make the lines glued and overlapped, it would make those cross sections kind of on top of each other. So it would make, and at the point where the, the um, sections inter or I guess intersected, there would basically be and so we'll be modeling a material inside of another material, which we know is obviously impossible. So the command you have to use is under operate, booleans, glue. And you glue the lines, pick all, and that tells ANSYS that all the lines are connected, and that when you make it the cross sections, they'll be connected. Then you have to do overlap. You can hit lines, and you pick all. Oh, never mind. Glue did the job. So now, though, um, when you mesh, first you want to use mesh attributes because these lines will be different cross sections. So we have to do picked lines. I pick this guy and that guy. Hit OK. And make them the first cross section. Hit OK. Then pick lines and do this one and that one. Hit OK. And make those the second cross section. Hit OK. And then, remember, I have to divide these lines as well. So we're going to do size controls, manual, lines, all lines. And then we'll pick an edge length. Now, this was 20 by 20. So 0.5 is going to do 40 divisions along the length, which is just plenty for this uh, lab. So now those lines are divided up. And now we can just go into mesh, lines, and pick all. So now if you want to make sure that your geometry is correct and that your parts are fully interlapping like uh, overlapping like they should. You go into style, size and shape, display of element on, hit OK. And there we have it. These are fully um, intersecting and overlapping just like we need them to. So I'm going to make this a little prettier and go into style, edge options, and turn the dashed lines off, replot, so that I can see my geometry a little better. And again, you'll have a third uh, beam that comes out, you know, at this side. And then all you have to do, you guys know how to do the rest of this stuff, is just um, loads to find apply structural displacement on key points. You need to lock this key point down in all degrees of freedom. And then you need to apply uh, a force, you know, on the end of your beam. I'm not sure if you have a complex force or a simple force, but I'm just going to put a simple downward force, you know, 100 pounds, and Z. And then you'll solve, and you're, you want the plot displacement, obviously, in, I guess, the Z direction here, because you want to get uh, the displacement that you can verify with Castiglianos. Um, so you'll, you'll just go into the solution, you'll solve, and then you'll... Um, go into the plot the way you usually do plot results, uh, contour plot modal solution, and you'll pick a degree of freedom solution in the neg in the z direction, and that'll be the um, plot that you turn in, and you can use those numbers um, to verify your hand calculations, and that's all you need for this lab. So have fun and enjoy. I will see you later.